All right, motherfuckers. I was gone for a little bit. Had to go get some lunch. Uh, I, uh, I heard uh, some rumblings when I came back. You know, I saw the lover. He had uh, escaped the closet where uh, he locked himself out of shame uh, for interrupting my funeral last, uh, last time, and he escaped. So I don't know when he'll be back, if ever. Hopefully not. I'm guarding my laptop uh, from now on forever. So we'll see if the cocksack comes back or not. But until then, by popular request, here's a video. Someone suggested it, and I'm making it. It's called 25 Reasons Why Brian Alvarez Sucks, Motherfucks. Now, for all of you that don't know who Brian Alvarez is, there's a guy called Dave Meltzer, Motherfucks. Yeah. He's like, everyone knows who Dave Meltzer is, but Brian Alvarez basically is this guy's rent boy. He's the guy that's there with him and that uh, Dave Meltzer uses for more things than just bouncing ideas off of. He probably bounces his jizz off his face, you understand me? But anyways, uh, let's talk about 25 reasons why Brian Alvarez sucks. Reason number one, he agrees with Dave Meltzer on almost anything, which means two things. One, he's wrong about almost everything. And two, this guy doesn't think for himself, he just braze along with the sheep. Reason two, he looks like a total beta male. I talked about this in a previous video, when I, when I eventually saw a video, or saw a picture of Brian Alvarez, he did not look at all like what he thought he, he would look like, because, you know, I just imagine him as being this, like, bigger guy for some reason, because he's so puny, that, like, it just, it just, it was shocking to just see someone that puny. But he was puny. Reason three, he looks like he lets Dave Meltzer fuck his wife, motherfuckers. <laughs> Reason four, he wears a dumb hat. Reason five, he talks like he knows something. You know, he talks like every other smart. He talks like he knows what he's talking about. He has no, no idea what he's talking about. He just, this guy's just like a complete sheep puppet. Just says the same things Dave Meltzer says. And but and he he's like... You'd think that this guy's like Vince McMahon or something. He's just a fucking loser. Which brings us to uh, reasons, well, six, seven, and eight. But let's go through them in order. There's a lot to be said here. Six, seven, and eight. Six. He lets Dave Meltzer pound his holes for money because that's the only explanation that I have as to why he would be there. Because he does not contribute anything. Reason seven. He reminds me a lot of Don Lemon from CNN. And reason eight, the reason he reminds me a lot of Don Lemon is because he is a smug douchebag. Now, recently, Don Lemon and these two other beta males on CNN were saying, like, one of them made a joke about how Trump probably can't find Ukraine on the map. It was a shit joke. But Don Lemon laughed as if he had heard the funniest thing in the world. Uh, and... A lot of people were pissed off because he was pretty much mocking the entire Trump voter base along with Trump. But the reason that I was pissed off, no, it wasn't, wasn't because of that. I was pissed off because of the smugness of someone like Don Lemon. You know exactly what I'm talking about. You know, that, that like thing they do with their eyes where they're like looking down on you, but like they're doing it just enough so that if you say, hey man, don't look down on me, they have like plausible deniability and, and, and can then be like, I wasn't looking down on you. That's not what I meant. You know, that kind of bullshit, right? So there you have it, you know? Brian Alvarez is the same exact thing. He has this smugness, you know? Smug people are the worst because a lot of times, either like, well, there's, there's two things. Either they have no reason to be smug, right? Because at the end of the day, Don Lemon, I mean, he's a, he's a, he's a successful guy. I'm not going to sit here and deny him his, his success. I mean, he has terrible ratings, obviously. And, you know, CNN is just not doing very well in ratings in terms of, like, compared to, like, places like Fox and other, you know, news stations. But nonetheless, he's obviously a successful guy. But let's be real. Anyone can do Don Lemon's job. Like, if you give me that job, I could do it. I could probably do it better than him, to be honest. Right? What does he do? He just goes there and reads, reads shit. You know? So, um, I don't think there's anything to be smug about. Just like Brian Alvarez, whose job is even easier. He just sits there and just says yes to Dave Meltzer. But... The most important thing about the, the, the smug people is this, like, this snakishness that they, they implement their smugness with. You know what I mean? Like, they'll do something smug, right? And, and they'll just, like, like, they'll just turn their head and be like, oh, I didn't do it. <laughs> you know, you can't, you can't do anything to me. I'm smug. Like, I got a bullshit. And Brian Alvarez just reminds me of that kind of person. And I hate that kind of person, motherfuckers. 
Reason number nine. Brian Alvarez reminds me of Niles from Frasier without any of the redeeming qualities that Niles from Frasier has, motherfucks. Reason 10. He is younger than Dave Meltzer and will probably be the next Dave Meltzer if this nonsense continues. Or, or worse, Dave Meltzer will just give him his own little show and they'll double up on our asses. No thanks, motherfucks. No thanks. Number 11. I have to do some Googling to find out some information about this guy because I need to find a picture of him for the video, number one. And two... I found that he actually has a Wikipedia page, so good for him. But apparently he was, and kind of is, a wrestler himself, motherfucks. That's right. This cocksucker is also a wrestler. And apparently, reason number 12, he is billed at 5'7", but he looks like he's about 5'3", motherfucks. They lied. They're right. He's this guy lied about his hide essay. I lied, essay. Now... I saw also in his Wikipedia, this is a bonus reason. Consider this reason uh, number 12.5, I suppose. But I, I saw that he is a black belt in jiu-jitsu. Now, when the MMA craze started, started out, if you will, like the real one, you know, like the one that has led to, to, to the UFC being what it is today. It started after uh, Tough Enough, uh, sorry, not Tough Enough, Tough, The Ultimate Fighter, uh, tough enough, same shit basically. He stole the idea from Vince, and then, like, you know, now UFC is like a multi billion dollar company as well. Dana White, you know, Dana White is not good at his job, honestly. People are like, Dana White's the great, no, he's not. All he's done is just copy Vince McMahon. But, anyways, um, so there you have it, right? Dana White did the Ultimate Fighter, I think mostly to put himself over, you know, because that's nobody knew who the fuck Dana White was before then. But, anyways, and it just so happened that after the first season of the Ultimate Fighter, the What's his name? Forrest, not Forrest Whitaker, that's the actor. Fuck, it's, it's escaping me. But Forrest Griffin, uh, after he and Stephen Bonner had their fight, and the fight was a great fight, right? Everyone watched that, and it was for free. So everyone watched it, people were like, holy shit, that was brutal, right? That catapulted the UFC into, like, a different level, if you will. And with that came other catapultations uh, in the real world, motherfuckers. One of them was Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu being a thing. Now, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu ha had for a long time been the fastest growing martial art because I think they used growth rate. And the way it works is like this. One year they had 10 people who were doing it. The next year they had 20, 100% growth rate, right? So not that hard really, right? It's kind of like I've grown by what, 40% in the last month. I've gone from like 220 subscribers to like 340, whatever the fuck I have now, you know? But I've only grown 120, which is pretty good. Don't get me wrong, but you understand what I'm saying, right? And with that came this idea of like, Oh, with jujitsu, I can beat up bigger opponents. Well, I got news for you, pal. You know, I did uh, one jujitsu class when it was big. Uh, a little bit after it was big, because everything I just explained happened to my senior year of high school. Like the Forrest Griffin, all that shit, like the aftermath of that. So 2005, 2006, I graduated 2006. Uh, and then in college, I did boxing. And that's when Brazilian jujitsu really got big. And me and my friend went, went to take a class. Everyone was out of shape. For anyone here that does Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, and, like, and I, I, I've been honest, you know, I've gained, I put on some pounds myself. But back then, I was in very good shape because I did boxing. And everyone there who was doing MMA was just in atrocious shape. Now, I was in a, in like a beginner class, you know, I'm not, I wasn't there like against UFC fighters, obviously, right? But that gym uh, has produced pretty good fighters, the, 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 the place that I went to. And they all started out in classes, classes like the one that I went to. And everyone there was out of shape, you know? Like calisthenics, you do a lot of that in boxing. So I was doing very well. Even my friend, who didn't do that, he just played basketball occasionally, was able to keep up with those people. I was able to literally run circles around them because in the end, you run in a circle and you do push-ups. And I was just like, I just wasn't stopping. I was a machine. So the reason I say this is because during that height of Brazilian jiu-jitsu, it was marketed as if, as if like, you could beat the shit out of anybody with some Brazilian jiu-jitsu. You can't, motherfucks. You can't. If someone is stronger than you, they're going to break out of that shit. Now, if they're, like, marginally stronger than you, then you'll have a chance, right? But uh, I honestly believe I could beat up Brian Alvarez. I would just knock him out, you know? Oh, he's going to do a single leg takedown. No, he won't. I'll knee him in the face. Because I remember what they said was, uh, in order to counter, like, what we learned in, in the two classes that I went of BJJ, the guy's like, if someone puts you in a rear naked choke, flip them over, then you're holding his arm. This was supposed to be, like, street defense. And he's like, then you can put him in an arm bar. And I asked him, I was like, well, if I have him on the ground and I'm holding his arm, 
Why don't I just stomp him in the face three or four times and win the fight that way? Right? And the guy was like, oh, because that's not BJJ. And I'm like, that's all I needed to know. Never came back. You know? You're not, it's not going to help you win any fights, motherfuckers. So uh, that's what I got to say about that. Reason 13. Uh, and reason 2.75. One of my good friends does Brazilian jiu-jitsu. And he was someone that like, like he did wrestling in high school. And he understands, because we've talked about it, that I'd whoop his ass. You know what I'm saying? And he's like, he's like, yeah, you probably beat my ass. He's like, but I, he's like, I'd probably beat you in Brazilian jiu-jitsu. And I'm like, I don't even know if that's true, to be honest. Because me and him have grappled a couple of times. And because I've been stronger, I've been able to like defeat him, you know? Uh, but that was in the past. Now he's like, you know, he's catching up. You know what I'm saying? Like, he's catching up. He's a little younger than me. So he's catching up. So um, reason 13. It looks like uh, Brian Alvarez was an indie jobber. And with that in mind, uh, same, still part of reason 13. What qualifies him to give advice to the WWE? You know, him and Dave Meltzer sit down there. Like fucking Brian Alvarez. It said, it said on, on his Wikipedia that he ran some like indie like backyard promotion, right? So this asshole is like, WWE should do this. What? You ran a backyard, like, wrestling promotion. Nobody give a fuck. You know, and you can tell Vince McMahon what to do. Shut the fuck up, punk bitch. <laughs> Anyways, reason 14. It would appear, because I, I, I did get a little caught up in this Wikipedia. And I read some of it. But it would appear that his finisher appears to be the super kick. <laughs> can you believe that shit? This motherfucker. Uh, the young bucks that use his finishing move as a normal move. And this, this guy's finisher. And he's smaller than them both. What else? He, uh, fifth reason, reason uh, 15. He is dying to have those same young bucks name a move after him. You know this is true. Just like they have the Meltzer driver, Brian Alvarez is hoping that one day they have the Alvarez driver. And you know what? They probably will, motherfucks, because they are marks. Now, reason 15. I mean, sorry, that was reason 15. Reason 16. Because he is a wrestler, right, and he's only 44 years old, there is a chance that we may one day see him, at least in some one-off capacity, in AEW. And that will be the end of that. Once that happens, people will be like, this is retarded, get out of here. Uh, but indie promotions like AEW do do that. And now I know people are going to be like, it's not an indie promotion. Yes, it is. I don't care. Blow me. How about that? Um, reason 17. Wrestling Observer. Where the fuck it's called? Wrestling Online. I don't even know what it's called. But the one where he works with Dave Meltzer sucks. It sucks ass. I don't want to hear about it anymore. Reason 18. Smarks like him. The smarts like him. Because he's been in the business, quote unquote, and because he reminds them of themselves. You know, he is a smart. He is a small man, uh, or otherwise he would be a neck beard fat ass, but he's the other kind of smart. A small guy who wants to be a wrestler, and he did it. So people like him and respect him. I, I don't. I don't, motherfuckers. Reason 19, he comes from backyard wrestling, which means he is a sellout. Because those backyard wrestling promotions, a lot of them are like hardcore, like table to the head, chair to the balls, things of that nature, right? Maybe his wasn't, it probably wasn't. He looks like a cuck, so it probably wasn't. But if it were, then he would be a sellout because now he's like a total shill for New Japan and this other bullshit, which is all about honor and shaking hands and very few chair shots and things of that nature. Reason 20. He once had a wrestling match with Marco Stunt. And that is enough to put him in the category of complete and utter jobber. Which means he was also a jobber in whatever, like whatever independent league he was in. He was a jobber there too. I went, I, me and my friend went to a show. And they had this really big wrestler. He was going to have a match. This little wrestler came out. It was his debut match for the indie organization apparently, right? And one of the fans told us. And he goes in and the big guy just whoops his ass. The big guy's manager comes out and says, this is what happens to you, jobber. And he beats him. Right? And I thought to myself, man, this poor guy. I know it's probably like his first time ever in front of a crowd. And, you know, you got to start somewhere. I'm not going to like sit here and, you know, suggest that he needs to be like, you know, have his first match beating The Undertaker. But it's like, this guy, this poor guy, like he's a jobber in this indie federation that I just went to. You know? Like he's so much of a jobber that even in a jobber league, he's a jobber. And that's the same thing with Brian Alvarez, motherfuckers. <laughs> uh, reason 21. His voice sucks, motherfuckers. His voice sucks. Now, I'm always fair. When I say it sucks, I mean it doesn't fit his appearance. He actually has a pretty decent voice. You know? Like, if he were, like, a six foot three uh, Hispanic guy, 
right? Instead of being a five, five foot one Hispanic guy. If you were, like, that would be a very fitting voice because, yeah, he does have some authority in the pipes, right? But let's be real, motherfuckers. This guy's the voice doesn't match his stupid little body. So when you see him, the first thing you think of is, oh, that's not at all what I expected to look like. What a cuck. I should beat his ass for humor. Next, reason 22. For some fucking reason, this guy takes little pauses when he speaks. Like, you know the kind of pause that people take when they think they've made a good point and they want you to acknowledge that they've made a good point? It's almost like a nonverbal haha. Like, you know what I mean? That little cocksucker does this all the time and I fucking hate it. Reason 23. He has led the idiots into believing that Okada is a great entertainer. And here it is. Reason 24. He, along with Meltzer, but definitely him, ignores the fact that New Japan is something that no one understands. When you're going to tell me that New Japan is better than WWE, you better, at the minimum, speak Japanese and have transcribed and translated the entirety of the promos that you're talking about. Now, I know there are not that many promos, but they have a few. And I need you to translate them for me. That's the only thing that I care about. Then, even then, I'm not going to read that shit, but it, the, the, the promos in New Japan should have subtitles in English so that you can see what the person's saying and see how they're saying it. These cocksuckies don't speak Japanese. I'm going to take a guess and say they don't speak Japanese. And with that in mind, motherfucks, right? The reality is that there's no way that wrestling can be good if you don't understand what's going on. And I don't mean understand the story. I mean the nuances, right? Like, people are like, well, I can't believe Nakamura didn't become a big star. Well, what led you to think that he would be a big star, motherfucks? What led you to think that? It sure as shit is in his promos because you don't speak Japanese. So what led you to think that he was going to be good? His matches? He has the same matches against Dolph Ziggler and Sami Zayn, right? But no one gives a fuck. Hmm, what could it be? What could it be that allowed people like me to correctly predict that Nakamura would be a jobber? Right? Just like I told my friend recently. I was like, dude, NXT is the jobber league. Like, I hate to say it. It's the jobber league. You know what I mean? Then he's like, oh, no, it's not, man. I'm like, dude, Tommaso Ciampa will never be WWE champion. And he was like, I don't agree. I'm like, we'll see, motherfucker. We'll see. Right? Same shit. Some people just don't have what it takes, dog. And in New Japan, very few of them do. And people like, like uh, Dave Meltzer and this rat, uh, Brian Alvarez, are out there just telling us, oh, Okada, he cut a great promo. Did he? Did he really? Because you don't understand what he said. So how the fuck do you know it, it was a great promo? Oh, I read his facial. Get the fuck out of here. No, you didn't. All right? You don't understand what he said. You don't know what the hell's going on. You don't know why this guy's fighting that guy. Oh, you just, you just see it. You're like, oh, they're fighting each other. Right? That's why when someone like Jericho comes in, it becomes interesting because Jericho doesn't speak Japanese either. So he's like, in English, they're, they're of course going to translate his English in the Japanese so that the viewers in, New, in, 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 in Japan can understand what's going on. Right? And he's like, I'm going to beat you, Naito. You did this, you did that. And you're like, okay, finally I understand why they're fighting, you know? And then, like, when Naito speaks, you're like, don't give a shit about what this guy has to say. Jericho's the one that's, like, doing the work here. Who cares, right? And reason 25. Brian Alvarez and Dave Meltzer, but Brian Alvarez mostly, thinks that they are better than the fans. And I got news for you, pal. No one's better than the fans. We're not better than Vince. Vince isn't better than us either. I mean, he's a better businessman, obviously, than most of us. But you understand what I'm saying. Uh, but this attitude that Brad Alvarez has, that like, and Dave Meltzer as well, but and just that whole show in general, right, is this idea that like, you know, they have to educate us, like, like we're idiots or something, right? Like, wrestling isn't this like, you know, it, like show or entertainment for like the hyper intellectual, you know what I mean? It isn't. It's simple shit, man. It's guy, throws guy on his head and then covers him for one, two, three. It's simple shit. You don't have to analyze it this deeply like we tend to do sometimes, right? You know, if you see me, I analyze things like inconsistencies, right? Stupid decisions, overrated wrestlers, things like that. So I'm analyzing the analyzing, right? Or I'm analyzing things that don't make any sense. I'm not out here trying to tell you like, you know, uh, like what, what's going on basically, right? I might summarize what's happening, but like... I'm not out here playing Dave Meltzer or Brian Alvarez being like, well, that was a great match and the story they told really worked. Fuck, you mean it really worked? It worked for some and it didn't work for others. Some people thought it was a shit story. What do you mean it worked, right? 
That's the problem, right? And I don't, I don't purport to be, to be saying anything other than my opinion. These two jerk-offs, they speak as if it's fact. But, well, oh, yeah, yeah. Like, Okada and Naito was, was definitely a better match than Cena and AJ Styles. Get the fuck out of here. No, it wasn't. It, it, it's, it's up to anyone's opinion to determine it. But if you're going to make claims like that, which we all do, right? Uh, at least have evidence. Explain to me. I don't think I've ever heard Brian Alvarez explain why Okada's a good wrestler. You know, none of these motherfuckers have ever explained that. That should be a video on its own. Like, what makes these guys... That's probably going to be the next video. What makes these guys good? What is it that makes them good? Someone explain to me what makes them good. And I'm glad that this was reason 25. Because we're done with this. Because we got to move on to the next video. Cut bags. You understand me, fuckies? <laughs>